Okay, everyone. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay, can I just get like a, a thumbs up or something in the chat? Hello, hello. Great. Sweet. Uh, it is an Audio Technica, the model name I forget, uh, but it's the one that has been super hard to find and I had to go to a, a music shop to get it. Which probably isn't helpful to your question, but it is an Audio Technica. All right, it is time to get started here. Cool, my slides are going. All right, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Christian Bryant and I am streaming in from, uh, on the East Coast of the United States. I am a software engineer who actually just converted to the dark side of engineering management uh, at Hopin, the platform you're actually on right now. Uh, I started back here when we were about 10, maybe 11 people or so, uh, nine months ago. Uh, and now thanks to demand from organizers to put on amazing events like this one, uh, we're pushing 170. It's uh, It's been quite the journey. And also thank you for joining in on my session today, uh, all on how you can level up your time management skills. Now, just to kind of lay some things out here from the beginning, I, I'm not a time wizard. I don't claim to have all the answers. Um, really what sort of inspired me for this talk in general was uh, as I've transitioned from software developer to engineering manager, um, you know, I've, I've had this way of thinking about and organizing my time that actually really prepared me for when I got into engineering management, I felt, um, oh yeah, like I can I can do this. This isn't too bad. Um, really, what's just changed is how I apply it, uh, and it really all just boils down to again how I look at time, and that is what I'm going to talk about today. And also to let you guys know, uh, I do talk fast, so if I am talking fast, tell me to slow down. I will, I definitely will, um, but I'll definitely leave some time at the end. Um, this is a session, so uh, if you want to join in and ask questions, um, we'll leave time at the end, and you can you can hop on in. Okay, cool. Well, let me keep my slide up here. So yeah, before we get in, well, I guess oh, this is already a slide I was supposed to say who I am. So I already missed it. Let's go to this one. A tale of two developers. So this is a story I want to tell before we, we dive into time management. So uh, it's fictitious, of course, um, but the storyline is quite common amongst many uh, who work in our field. So let's take, for example, Diego and Melissa. Both are high output rockstar developers. Uh, they both work at a growing startup with a small team, um, which naturally means they're both finding themselves, you know, wearing many hats. Let's look at Diego. You know, aside from his daily coding duties from writing code, doing PR reviews, uh, he might be helping the support team or interviewing candidates or sitting in on a design review, uh, grooming tickets. Um, he's always that guy you can count on to ask for help anytime. Uh, Diego is a very busy man. Um, but it's starting to wear on him. You know, he's working late extra hours each day. Uh, he's feeling overwhelmed, exhausted. He's running on fumes and caffeine, um, which naturally will lead you to having your sleep being affected. And with that, he's coming to work with less and less excitement and brings fewer ideas to the table each day. So now let's look at Melissa. Like Diego, you know, Melissa wears many hats. Uh, from that's you know, interviewing candidates, sitting in on design review, grooming tickets, et cetera. Uh, Melissa is a very busy woman. But unlike Diego, she does not feel overwhelmed and exhausted. Uh, she's not running on fumes and caffeine. She gets good sleep uh, and she comes to work excited and fresh with ideas. So what's going on with Diego? Well, let's let's peek into a scene from Diego's workday. Uh, and again, maybe something that's very common to other developers who are listening in. So we see Diego hunched over in his Herman Miller um, and the startup has deep pockets. Uh, headphones on, he said down on a new feature. Uh, suddenly, the sound of notifications from Slack uh, begins to interrupt his tunes. Uh, hey, Diego, mind pairing really quickly on a bug? Diego drops what he's doing and helps. He's a nice guy. Let's fast forward into the day and look at another scenario. Diego is once again heads down doing code review. Uh, when, like clockwork, 
a Slack notification fires off. Uh, this time it's Karen from marketing. It's always Karen, isn't it? Uh, Diego, when will the new feature ship? Can you send me a quick summary of it so I can add it to our blog post? Diego figures he can do this later as he's trying to stay focused on code review. So he adds the request to one of his seven places he keeps the to-do list. And then fast forward four hours later, he forgot. And here comes Karen from HR pinging him again uh, as he rushes to complete the task. So given those two examples, it's, it's pretty obvious what Diego's problem is. Uh, and this is sort of the main motivation behind this talk in the first place. And something I used to do a long time ago uh, was reacting to work uh, and not having a solid way of actually staying organized. So to go about work and managing your time in a reactive way, you know, day after day, like there's no wonder Diego is, is feeling overwhelmed. Now let's look at Melissa. Melissa is heads down on a task when a peer, be, when a peer pings her asking if they can pair really quickly on a bug. Everything's, everything's always really quickly from, uh, from other, other people in the office. Uh, you know, what, is, what does she do? Does she help them out right away? Absolutely not. Her blocked out focus time is sacred to her. And so she responds with a, sure, look an open spot on my calendar after 3 p.m. and I'll be happy to help. So let's look at one more example. Melissa is doing code review when she gets another message from marketing asking about the same thing you know, Diego was asked about, if she can provide a two sentence summary of a new feature they're about to ship. Uh, but again, Melissa is already in the middle of something, so she adds this request to her distraction bucket. Uh, 30 minutes later, once she's finished helping her peer, she goes back to her bucket board, which is the single source of truth for all of her tasks, sees a reminder, and quickly knocks it out. So you're hearing me say bucket, bucketing board, distraction bucket. I'm going to come back to this a little bit later, but the important thing to note here is the difference between Diego and Melissa. Melissa understands that you can't do everything at once and that multitasking is a complete joke. Uh, but with key organization tactics, she's able to have a better relationship with time to be able to get more of it back, accomplish, and do more than she thought she ever could. All right. Can you guys hear me okay still? I was getting a notification that there might be audio issues. No? Okay. So good? Okay, cool. Awesome. So Diego and Melissa. So with that being said, who is this talk for? Obviously, this is a conference with develop, a lot of developers here. Um, it's geared toward developers, as I myself am a developer. Um, however, whether you're a team lead or manager, um, anyone can use this tactic if they find themselves reacting to work, like Diego, uh, feeling out of control with their time, rushing to get work done last minute, making excuses that there's not enough time, and then possibly, too, I mean, given with COVID and a lot of us who have previously been inside of a uh, you know, an actual physical office are now going into remote life. And that, that it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge sometimes. So with that being said, why do I care about this topic? Um, well, before hopping, I did a lot of freelance development work, um, typically on top of a full-time, mostly remote job. Um, I mean, a typical month for me or a week for me would look like, you know, I, I would probably knock out between one or two freelance gigs per month. Uh, I would try to get most of my IC work done at my day job within the first four or five hours. Um, I learned how to fly airplanes, taking Korean classes. Uh, I mentored several junior developers for a few hours per week. Um, still found still found time to travel and explore with my wife. Um, jump to today, being that I'm at Hopin, and it's been it's been the fastest paced company I've ever worked for. Uh, I can't do freelancing anymore, um, but you know I'm still finding time to you know up my Korean lessons from one to two times a week. I still take on you know uh, a couple of juniors I mentor, uh, doing monthly house renovations. Um, and again, still time, still find time to uh, travel and explore with my wife. Um, really, it's just the way I organize my time. Uh, I feel like it's the only way I'm one, able to stay sane and to take on all the things I do and be successful with them. Uh, and that's really what inspired me to give this discussion. Um, I mean, uh, again, transitioning from engineering manager or from developer to engineering manager, uh, I would say just because you can code doesn't mean you can be a, an engineering manager. That didn't prepare me whatsoever at all. Um, but like I said earlier, the way I'm able to structure my time and think about it has made that transition so much easier and effective. Um, and that's again, why I want to, I want to talk about it today. Um, so aside from that, uh, you know, reacting to work, right. It, it's just terrible. And it, it really starts to trickle down into the other areas of your life. Um, but good news is there, there is an easy fix. So let me go to the next slide. Oops. Oh, no, I'm fast forwarding too much. Let me go back. Okay, still why I care about this. So just because people that, you know, there are people that react to their work, this doesn't mean that you aren't good at your job. 
I mean, if you remember Diego, he's a rock star developer, high output. Um, he just doesn't have the tools to deal with these type of distractions. You know, if Karen from marketing reaches out needing a one-off summary, uh, surely that can't be a distraction, right? I mean, it's something that's needed so we can better communicate what we're building for our customers. But in my mind, anything that is not my most, like my single most immediate priority, um, it's a distraction. If I'm in the middle of something I've blocked out time to work on specifically, and something comes up that isn't the world on fire or it happened, we have our oh shit channel. Uh, if it's not in that channel, it's going in my distraction bucket and I'm gonna look at it later. Um, <clears throat> again, so this is probably the second or third time you've heard me mention bucket. Um, so I should probably go to the next slide here and explain uh, what bucketing is and how it's my primary organization tool I use. So go to the next slide. Time buckets, right? So <clears throat> throughout the last, last three or four years or so, I would say um, I found regardless of whether it was managing my work life or activities in my personal life, I always found myself breaking down time into six categories. And let me just put these on here so I can read them off and not forget. You have distraction time, you have focus time, preparation, delegation, follow-up, and then check-in. So let me give a brief definition of each. <clears throat> Prep time. This is time spent on anything needed before actual work can get done or a decision can be made. Um, you can. This is basically a time that you're getting your ducks in a row. Delegation time. Uh, is there anything on your plate that you can offload? Uh, do you have to be in all those meetings on your calendar? Can someone else run the meeting? Uh, this is time to be used to figure out what can and needs to be delegated. We always don't need to be doing the work that comes at us that's on our plate. It's, it's, that's why we work in big companies and you know you can't do everything. Uh, focus, focus time. So this is where I'm rolling up my sleeves and getting to work. So uh, when I was an individual contributor, this was heads down, headphones on, I'm working on code. Um, it's changed a little bit as a manager and I will dive into that a little bit later. Uh, next piece you have is the follow-up and check-in time. Uh, these are these are very similar in a way. Uh, I You could probably keep them in one single bucket, but I again, I like to break things out. So to me, a follow-up time is anything where the ball is in my court. So I'm the blocker. I need to come back with information for someone else. Uh, check-in work is where the ball is in another person's court and I'm the one needing the information. So you can look at it as getting, getting versus giving a status update. And the next piece that you've heard me talk about here is the distraction bucket. This is my favorite bucket, actually. This is time that isn't in my immediate focus, uh, whether it's a one-off task or something I need to do uh, because someone pinged me or whatever. It can be a personal task too. It's just, if I'm in the middle of something and I get pinged and it's not an emergency, it just instantly goes to my distraction bucket and I'll pick it up later. So these bucketing, and I'm, I'm gonna show you some of the tools I use to actually bucket my time, but, um, these are very similar to like a to-do list, but I absolutely can't stand to-do lists. And the reason why I, I stick to bucketing is to-do lists are just so generic. Like, yes, we all have stuff to do. Everything everything is a to-do. I mean, any, anything and everything can be a to-do, but just having a list or on a sticky note or whatever apps you're using, it's it's just not concrete enough. It's like, okay, well, I have to do this, but can this be grouped with other things? Um, I just, I've always found it much harder to organize to-do lists versus actually having categorized time of, hey, this is when I spend time doing this type of work. This is when I spend time doing that type of work. So how can we put these into action? So I'm gonna give you two examples of what time bucketing, bucketing looks like for an individual contributor and those in leadership or management roles. Okay, so individual contributor bucket example, as we see here. So let's let's think about it let's talk about a perfect day for an IC developer, right? Uh, you know, nine to 9.15, you have team stand up, maybe 9.15 to 12, you're working on feature A. 12 to one, you have a nice little lunch break, one to two, some sort of team meeting or activity, maybe grooming. And then two to five, you spend the last three hours wrapping up feature A, put a, put a PR up and, you know, wipe your hands clean, call it a day. But we all know perfect doesn't really exist. And those time slots are usually filled with distractions from peers pinging you to pair on a bug, uh, getting asked to review some code, an impromptu conversation at the water cooler, uh, or you know, you're know you just on Instagram looking at whatever you're looking at. So for an IC, the primary time buckets you'll use here though are focus and distraction. Um, it is much simpler to time bucket when you're an IC, again, because your work isn't as uh, broken up into chunks as it is with management. So let's look at focus and distraction. So looking at focus time, this is a time that you've picked 
where you work the best. You know, you, you need to defend these blocks with your with your life. So, you know, put them on your actual work calendar as, you know, Christians focus time or Christians focus, no meetings. Um, this is the time where you let people know, like, hey, don't mess with this. this, this is my time. And during those hours, it's entirely up to you how you spend it. Um, but the point is, now you own that time. So let's look at the distraction time for an IC. And this is sort of the most, one of the more interesting ones here. So and we all know, and like I just said, uh, there's no such thing as a perfect day and nothing really ever goes to plan. So it's important that we plan for it. So if you go back to the example with Diego, where he was always reacting to work and as something came to him, he would do it and just, you know, or write it down on a sticky note and forget about it. Um, that, that's super reactionary and he's not planning for that. Like he can't come into work each day knowing that uh, Karen from marketing or HR, or whatever example I used, uh, is gonna be pinging him. But that's that's the problem. It's like, I think it's super important. It's always helped me is to plan for those unexpected pieces. So the question I ask myself is, when are the best times that I can be distracted? You know, maybe you're not a morning person. So 30 minutes in the morning, uh, or maybe immediately after lunch when you've just you know eaten, you're not really trying to get back in the zone just yet, uh, or the last hour of your day. Um, whatever the case is, the whole point is blocking out that time in your distraction bucket. So distraction bucket in practice, uh, again, like focus time, time bucketing means nothing if, if those blocks aren't respected. So, you know, I don't actually put, you can see in this example here, there's like distraction time, distraction time. That's, I added that just for this, this conversation here. Um, basically, if you're an IC, all you really need to worry about is putting on blocks of your focus time. Any of those other buckets, you know are your distraction time, so let's say you know my teammate Remo reaches out uh, when I'm in the middle of my focus time, asking to pair on some code or to walk him through some new architecture. You know my response in Slack or email is simple. Sure, can you add to? Can you add 30 minutes to my calendar? And when he goes there, he'll see my focus blocks, but he'll only see maybe a couple little openings. And those openings just happen to be very convenient times for me to be distracted. Um, basically, what you're doing here is you're giving yourself control of your day and when you reach things out. Um, this can be sort of a hard concept to grasp, especially if you do work in an environment where I mean, you're in a startup and a lot of things are changing and moving quickly. Uh, you, you just can't get to everything all the time. And not as much as someone says it is, not everything is an emergency. And if it really is an emergency, you'll know because you'll get paying 50 times about it. And that's that's when things you know kind of get out of whack. Um, but overall, to keep a normal flow of your day, just giving yourself a couple buckets of time to really stay focused and ignoring pretty much anything else um, could really help you get work done much quicker. So um, there was a question, how do you manage when you already have meetings scheduled in your distraction time? So yeah, so that is, that can be a distraction time. Um, basically it's one of those things where you might, like when I'm managing now, I pretty much have everything set up for me for most of the week, I know what I'm doing. Um, when I was in IC, uh, I would pretty much make my distraction times almost each day. Uh, if I knew there was like a weekly stand up, right, then yeah, I would maybe move my distraction bucket to an hour before, hour after, whatever was good for me. Um, meetings, yeah, meetings you always have to work around. So it's not it's not something you can say, oh, this is my focus time. I can't join this meeting today, boss. Uh, yeah, that, that probably won't work, won't work out too well for you. Um, yeah, you basically just have to plan around it. Um, so yeah, so with that being said, actually, let's take a look at what it looks like for someone that is in management. So as you can see before, pretty much, uh, you know, you're looking at with it as an IC contributor, it can fit really well into like an iCalendar or Google Calendar. Um, you know, it, the iCalendar was pretty much used as my to-do list uh, to mark down those blocks of when I will spend that time. Um, but as a manager, you don't always get the luxury of deciding when you're going to get to something or spend time on the task. Um, you know, your time is heavily dictated and influenced by your team. And, but you still don't wanna lose track of actually you know, what you're doing. So for this, bucketing for me goes into a Kanban style. So I still have my you know, needs delegation, needs follow-up, focus work, all of that. Um, but now instead of like, this is the block I'm gonna do it in, pretty much it's me in the day. If I'm taking incoming requests, everything by the most part goes into a triage or distraction bucket. And then in those little gaps of time here, so you can see here, let me, like these little gaps here that you get, those are where you're like, okay, that's that's the time I'm going to use to actually manage my buckets. So if I have something in my distraction bucket from someone that pinged me, I'll use that time, look at it, and see, okay, what what action do I need to take from here? At that point, I'm actually going back to update my columns and saying, okay, well, it's a it's a follow up ticket. 
So I need to follow up with this. doesn't mean I'll even do it right then. It's just me saying, okay, this is what needs to happen. And I'm just organizing it. I'm not reacting to work. I'm planning work as it's coming in. Um, and again, for some people, this might be, I mean, the people who are reaching out, they might get a little annoyed by it, um, especially if it is something urgent. But like I was saying, if it is, if it is really urgent, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll know about it and you'll have to likely react to it. Um, but most of the time, most work doesn't need to be reactive. It just, it just doesn't, I've, I've never felt the need <laughs> that, that we even need, even, even at Hopin, right? It doesn't, it doesn't really need to be that way. Um, so for example, let's, let's talk about this board a little bit more. Uh, let me go back with my GIF. So you can see some of the columns here. I guess I recorded this GIF a little too fast, but um, so yeah, so say in my follow-up board, I've got a task to figure out amplitude plan needed for our current usage. You know, once I do this and report back to our CFO to wait for an approval, uh, this moves to my check-in or balls in your court board. Um, also, if I get, yeah, again, if I get randomly pinged and it's not an urgent matter, it's going right to the distraction bucket. So sorry, any, any hopping folks that are listening, but that's, that's where it happens right away. Um, and really what the, the best thing about this board, especially for management is it really serves as a good outline sort of for like what my daily standups are and like what I actually need to be working on. Um, it's all right there. I don't have to think about it. So going back to what I was talking about reacting, um, you know, as a manager, in a way you are reacting, but you still can take control of your day by juggling what you're getting in and sorting it as it's coming, basically. It's sort of like a, a not not like a whack-a-mole, but uh, sort of like a, a downfall approach where you're just catching things and, and sorting them into the proper bucket. Um, so yeah, so the next question, which I was already sort of touched on here, uh, is yeah, when do you manage those distraction times? And again, to reiterate, uh, you use your empty blocks of time to back, basically go back in and and fill in the gaps. Um, so yeah, unlike when I was in IC, I couldn't easily block out huge chunks of focus time, um, but that doesn't mean I don't get to have any still as a manager. Um, so before, when I was in IC, I would block out typically four hours per day, like at a minimum. Um, now I don't really get to do that. I block out maybe two, four hour blocks per week at the very end of my day um, to be able to work on anything without distractions. And luckily for Hopin, most most of actually my direct reports are in Europe. So this timing works out super well. Um, if time zones aren't helping you out, the, you then you probably need to split it out and focus your periods into smaller chunks, but more frequently. So maybe like four two hour periods. And again, so what, what happens during that focus time? So that's where I actually do the actual work I need to get done. Um, and again, unless it's an oh shit moment and I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting the notification, uh, it's gonna have to wait. Um, yeah, so for any other type of non-focused work, if I'm in a meeting, reading through a document, or I get Slack notification or email, um, you know, I may respond in Slack with a quick eye emoji response that, hey, I've seen it, I recognize that I've been tagged. Um, but again, I'm literally just gonna copy that link from Slack, put it in my distractions bucket, and focus on it during these blocks of time. And I think that's basically it. It's more, it's more there's nothing crazy here. Um, it's just a way that I've been able to focus on my time. And I would love to sort of hear some of the thoughts that you guys have of ways you manage your time and maybe we can learn from each other. So if anyone wants to join the session, uh, I can you can request and I can bring you in. Uh, for, for Kanban list, I use Notion. Pomodoro is a little different. I mean, Pomodoro is still based off of your time. I mean, you are saying this is my focus time. I'm not getting distracted. Um, it, it's yeah, there is still a time session there or a length of time, but it just depends on when you're doing it right for so for management. I don't always get to say I'm gonna have 25 minutes or 90 minutes to work on something. Uh, yeah, notion notions. Uh, it's basically, man, it's like pretty much organizes my life now. It's a how it's a great way to describe notion notion is essentially a a file system for your life where you can have, uh, think of it like a wiki or anything like that. Um, you, you can you have, you can categorize things into different sections. Oh, code notion, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, again, I, I, I speak pretty fast, guys. Uh, where did you get the idea for buckets? Any resources you'd point to learn from here? Uh, yeah, I, I do have actually some um, on my website, Stack Yak TV. Um, there, there is, I have a couple of articles I've written about it, um, but bucketing in general, it, it was, it's, I mean, time bucketing has, has been a term used for a long time. So that's probably where I heard from it. But the only thing I didn't like about anything with like time management in general is everything's always felt super generic to me of like, okay, this is my to-do time. This is my whatever time. It was, it was very, it, it wasn't organized enough. So it's like, 
that's why I said I hate to-do lists where you're basically just like, okay, this is everything I need to do for a given day, but like, what does it actually mean? Okay, like maybe those three of those to-dos can be bundled or maybe I can give this that to-do list away to someone else to do and I don't need to do it. Um, that's why bucketing to me, it just made sense of like, hey, this is how I categorize it. So you can call them time categories. I just like, I think I just like saying buckets. I don't know. I'm too much of a Diego. It's a great idea to direct and plan ahead for when there's code crush time. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, let's... I think I just saw Sarah try to join. Okay. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Hello, hello. Hey, um, I have a question about um, how you would recommend talking to your coworkers who swear by multitasking. So they're in a meeting, like a demo or a retrospective, and they're IMing, doing other work, and they're encouraging you to do the same. Um, how would you recommend you have that conversation and say, like, because this is very, like, no, I need to focus in on my time. <laughs> yeah. Be distracted. Um, so I figured you might have something to say to this situation as well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends on if, if, you're, if your coworkers are believers in science, but I mean, it, the human brain can't multitask, right? Like I can't talk to you right now, brush my teeth and fiddle with my mixer over here. It's just, it's just not going to happen. I can maybe kind of do it, but likely I'm going to mess something up and it's not going to be right. So the argument is there's like, sure, but how, what is the quality of the work you're putting out there then? If I'm trying to listen to a meeting of someone giving an important discussion, I'm also slacking and doing something else. And then I get asked a question, like surely your coworkers have been caught in that situation before where they've been called upon and they were like, what? Right. And they kind of BS their way out of it. Um, yeah. They're, they literally are like, oh, you caught me multitasking. Like, can you repeat that? So like, yeah, they're so not you were ashamed of it either. Like they're not, um, not trying to hide the fact that they're doing it. Yeah. But yeah, but the same point, like you caught me multitasking and you're not, you weren't multitasking then because if you're multitasking, if you were properly multitasking, we wouldn't be having this conversation of uh, we, <clears throat> we caught you. So that makes sense. Hey, thank yeah. you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> uh, when do you plan out your time on a day by day basis or the beginning of the week? Um, it's sort of a mix of both. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I generally still again when I was like an IC. I kind of knew like my week was broken up by the week. Let's say I'm working on, you know, feature A, which is going to take me three or four days. So, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the time I was, okay, this is this is what I'm going to be working on. So I could do it at the beginning of the week. Um, with management though, I pretty much start every morning in my uh, like prep bucket, basically going back, <clears throat> excuse me, through some of the distractions I had, figuring that out, what I need to do, and then allocating where, where I need to. Uh, do you schedule a specific time for all non focus buckets or is it just handle those as you can during the non focus time? Yeah, I mean, do you ask, do you schedule a specific time for all non focus buckets? Uh, it depends. I mean, <clears throat> it's usually happens for management. It's happening. Yeah. When I get those open blocks, um, if there is, let's say like the really the main one is like the hands on work. Let's say I need to create some sort of architecture diagram, right? I need to spend some time distraction free. Um, that is in my like hands-on like focus work, and I'll usually do that during those focus times. But also, if there is a three things I need to follow up on that I haven't checked in on in a few days, uh, I'll use my focus time there maybe to step in. Especially if it's going to lead, if it's one of those things that I know will lead to a lengthy conversation, um, I'll tackle those during focus time as well. <clears throat> How do you plan non-working hours? So yeah, so I mean, typically, I mean, it depends on the type of job you're in. I mean, I'm usually done working by six or seven each day. Um, so usually after that, I just like don't, I just don't go past those hours. So if, if I want to go, you know, for a hike or I want to do anything outside, uh, <clears throat> I usually will just put that on. I, I won't even put it on my calendar because you just basically can't book a meeting with me after that time. I won't respond to it. If there is for, say, for example, the weather is super nice at 12 o'clock, um, then yeah, I'll just, I'll just book my, <clears throat> excuse me, a mini vacation. I think I followed a, a fruit fly. <laughs> <sighs> Any other questions? So think like budgeting, paying bills, et cetera. Do you plan those tasks? Oh yeah, no, exactly. So that's, yeah. So, okay, I think I get your question now. So yeah, so basically for those things, right? I mean, I'm not, I usually do those outside of work hours anyway. 
those are things I will sit down with my wife usually. And we actually have a little sort of like a bucketing app that will basically say, Hey, you know, you will, you know, today or tomorrow, we are going to sit down and do our budgeting or paying our bills, or uh, we'll put together our grocery list. So then we can go uh, tomorrow and pick them up. The app is called, oh, what is it called? It's called Our Home. It's um, it's actually, it's funny. It, it's, it works for well for us because I think we're just kids at heart. It's actually for like parents with younger children and like you can get like stars and stuff for, <laughs> for keeping track of things. Um, but it's just a super simple interface. And so I like doing it, using it. Um, it's called Our Home. So you plan 50 hours of work per week. Um, yeah, I mean, generally, I guess it adds up to that. I mean, as an IC, it was much easier to look at those kind of numbers of like this, how many hours I'm going to work in a given week. Uh, with management, that's one thing that has changed where, you know, you're, you're putting meetings all the time, like you're, you're in meetings all the time. And part of actually being at least an engineering manager is, you know, being an unblocker for your team. So if, I, if I'm not in a focus mode and, you know, someone pings me about something that is required to unblock them, like I need to stop what I'm doing and focus on that. Um, those things are hard to plan for. So again, my time buckets at that point, it still goes into my distraction bucket and I'll just know I need to make up that time at a different, different spot. Uh, what, do, what to do when you plan to do something in a given amount of time, but you realize you'll need more time to finish the task. Well, that's, uh, you know, developers, as we know, we're, we're terrible at estimating time. And I think uh, that's something I still suck at too. Basically, I think the rule for that is just, I mean, doubling or tripling what you actually think it will be. But still, let's say you went ahead and did that and you're realizing it's gonna take more time to finish the task. Um, that's, I mean, you're, you're not, you're probably not gonna get any hours back. You're still gonna need to put in that work. Um, so either A, what I would do if I got into that situation was I'd either A, add an extra hour to my focus time during that week. So I'd go into my calendar so everyone can see it, add that extra hour to kind of guarantee me that time of, hey, like if you're gonna book a meeting during this spot, like you gotta be really deliberate about it and I'm gonna ask you, hey, this is my focus. Or Sometimes you have to get up an hour early, put that focus time in before any meetings happen in the beginning of the day and knock it out then. So it's sort of the daily juggle of like, okay, when, when am I going to start? What am I going to replace for this? So maybe maybe you did have time spent where you were going to focus on the distraction bucket piece. Um, but then in those gaps, as you saw on the example, uh, you may put like an hour of focus time in there because you're running late on the task. As a junior dev, I find myself pinging mentors a lot. Should I be trying to hold my questions until their distraction time, or is it better just asking and let them prioritize how they want to? Well, I mean, if we're talking about just asking me as a developer, right? I mean, part of part of being a good developer is is knowing is it, it, learning how to ask the right questions, but also doing the research up front. So if you find yourself like you don't want to be always having to go for answers all the time, like it's good to actually dive in for yourself. So if you find yourself having to do that, then hey, maybe you should scale it back a little bit, write them down and then ping them when they have their focus time. Um, it just depends on your relationship with your manager. If it's a one-off thing, probably it's it's fine to do, but if you're doing it often, um, it's probably time to rethink of you know, how you're actually getting to even need to ask the question. Maybe do some investigation yourself first. How do you deal with those who don't respect your calendar and double or triple book you into meetings? Um, luckily, I, honestly, most people are pretty respectful about it. And anyone, especially at Hopin, if, if we, I mean, we all have our focus hours. Um, if you do need for some reason, let's say it's for, we have a big event happening and, you know, sorry, we, 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 need, we need to discuss something that needs to go out. Um, everyone's very courteous about it. And we'll usually ask, hey, like I booked it in your focus time, is, is this okay? Um, and usually when someone's nice about that, and at least they're saying like, they're aware of it. They're not just blatantly just throwing it on my calendar and not caring about it. I'm definitely gonna be more open to getting, I guess, distracted. Um, but again, the same, still in the day, that means that time I spent, I still have to make up that focus time and I'll have to put it somewhere else. Uh, do you task down, do you task down preparation time, follow-up time and for code reviews separately? Um, not, I mean, let's say I have my big bucket of like, okay, like this is what I need to do during, like, let's say for prep time, right? So what would be a good example of prep time is, um, you know, okay, well, before this talk, right? I need to review my slide and make sure I didn't have any dumb spelling errors, which I still probably did. Um, that's time, it still goes in my 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 bucket of or my, my Kanban board of prep time. And then essentially that item is just, okay, work on slideshow. So I still have it in there if that's, if that's what you're asking. Um, 
about keeping it separate, but if not, you can ask me and I'll try to rephrase it. How do you transition from distraction time to focus time or how do you get yourself motivated to start that focus time? Yeah, that's a great question because right, I mean, we're all focused on, you know, we all have our best time at each given part of the day. Um, and I will say, you know, going back to when I was first talking about this, when you're an individual contributor, you have much more focus time during the day and it's easier to pick those times of when you work the best and then any of the other slots are for when you get distracted. Um, but no, that, that is definitely, that's, I think, a challenging part of the new role now. Um, yeah, sometimes like you, you, you've been distracted all day in meetings, you still need to get that focus time done. You just sort of have to kind of bite the bullet. Um, but typically though, I mean, I, I guess you can, you can go back and be like, well, you know, depends on what you're working on. I mean, for, especially for Hopin, I mean, it's, it's nonstop go, go, go here. Um, I'm generally pretty excited what I'm doing at the time. So I, I usually look forward to my focus time anyway. So I'm already kind of amped up for it. Uh, when working from home, how do you best transition from work time to home time? Great question. So I have a wife that is very, very adamant about that. So usually uh, she'll she'll call me downstairs. Um, no, it, it's 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 important to. I mean, basically, I have my set hours. Sometimes I will work a little later than normal, or if I'm working on like a YouTube video. Um, but pretty much in my calendar, I'll have I'll book out. It sounds bad, but I have to do it. I'll book out like quality time, basically. So from this point on, like if I'm having quality time right now, these three hours at the end of my day, uh, like I'm turning my phone off. Well, unless, unless she's on her phone, then I'll get on my phone too. Um, or whether we're gonna go watch a movie or something like that. But those those are also super protected, just like my focus time is. So when I'm spending time with my wife, um, like my friends are calling me, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna answer. Any other questions? Let me scroll up and see if I missed any. Uh, any other favorite any other favorite tools um honestly like i mean notion notion is probably my, my favorite right at the moment i still use my iCalendar sort of i actually my my iCalendar now is what used to be like my actual like task i need to do for the day when i was ic now i actually just use it like a normal calendar and to say okay this is my my quality time basically for anything personal um so i use that notion and again the the one my wife and i use for basically just figuring out when we're going to do those type of things like scheduling finance or budgeting or grocery shopping. Um, other than that, I like to keep it super simple. I mean, that that's one of the problems too of why I don't like having a bunch of to-do lists and things like that or many places is you don't stick to one and like there's no, you don't get good at using that tool. Um, so I, I keep my tools, I said, pretty, pretty simple and, and straightforward. Uh, there was one I saw about any tips for encouraging coworkers to communicate more asynchronously? Um, yeah, I mean, if you're not using Slack, I mean, Slack is a good place to do it. You can also, you know, get into calls from there too, so it can get distracting. Um, really, what it comes down to is just managing expectations. I think. I mean, it's we have the tools and technology to com communicate async pretty easily or easily. Um, really, it just comes down to like, hey, am I feeling ignored? And that's that's the kind of thing you have to balance here when you when you start being very protective about your time. Um, that's definitely what you need to balance. And so basically, let's say, you know, uh, Brian messages me about something and, you know, I, I see it, I read through it and it's not super, super urgent. Um, but I know the conversation we'll have is going to probably take 15 or 20 minutes out of my day. Um, I'll usually just respond with like a, a, a the eyeball emoji. So it, it tells Brian, Hey, Christian has seen it. He's acknowledged it. And it's sort of like the universal way of saying, hey, I'll, I'll get back to you on this. Um, and that's usually what I'll do is I'll copy a link to that thread and post it in my Notion. And then when I go back into my distraction bucket, I'll be like, okay, I got to follow up on this thread. I'll go in there and spend the, you know, 20, 30 minutes. <clears throat> How do you elicit feedback from your team or peers to make improvements on time management? Um, yeah, I mean, for, for team stuff, right? I mean, we, we try to limit as many meetings as possible, especially ones that we don't need to be in. So um, it really just depends on our team. Like we actually have tried doing async standups on Slack, um, but also it's one of those things where we maybe we kind of just like seeing each other in the morning and seeing our faces. So it's, that's time, that's right, distraction time. Like it's time we tend we could get back by not spending the extra 10 minutes, but there's good distraction time too, right? You, you get to see your team's face, 
uh, especially since it's a remote and you know the personal connections are harder to maintain. Um, and that's one way to do it. But also, I mean, with with our feedback from our team, I mean, we simply just ask, like, hey, do you do you guys like doing async standups? Yes, no, and then we'll iterate from there. So I think it's important just to stay flexible. Um, oh yeah, Greg. So yeah, I'm gonna post on Stack Yak TV. I haven't posted up there yet. I forgot to hit publish. Um, but I will post the slides and actually pretty much every single note I have for this talk um, on there that you can you can check out. Uh, oh, I'm not sharing anymore. <laughs> Here, let me type it in. Got the actual link. Sort of a, a shameless plug here, but uh, that, that's where I post all my other content about time management and also just random developer things. And sometimes we'll do YouTube videos around it, but yeah, I'll post everything to Stack Act TV here in probably next hour or so. Any other any other last uh, questions? If anyone wants to hop in on the uh, the session talk and try out some of our, our hop-in features, that'd be cool too. Yeah, so the distraction bucket is, Hey Monica. Hello. <laughs> Testing uh, out the features. <laughs> Great presentation, yeah. by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's uh yeah, it's something I've been wanting to talk about for a while and finally worked up the guts to to do it. Yeah, no, it's definitely an important topic. I know um, between family and work, it's just it could get a little chaotic. So I was I was yeah. checking out the our home app. I was like, oh, this is nice. It gives you <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, it's it's good for like it's it's meant for like kids and stuff and like you can get like uh like little points and like set it yourself a little emoji character but I don't know I, it works for me yeah no I like it um, I'm just gonna hop on really quick um, for those who are joining us please take a moment to uh, fill out a brief survey we appreciate your feedback um, but I'm gonna just hop off so if anyone else wants to hop in live just go ahead and try uh, try adding yourself so thanks Christian cool thank you so much. Uh, Michael, so yeah, you asked a question. Uh, I didn't see your distraction bucket on your Kanban board. Where do you keep those items? So yeah, so those buckets now become like the column titles. So I have my distraction column, my focus column. Um, so basically it's not like a to do or doing done. Yeah, it's it's focus, prep, check-in, follow-up. Um, those are the new buckets for at least for management. Cool, thank you, uh, Levi. Yeah, I'm glad, glad you enjoyed it, and uh, also glad you guys are enjoying hopping. Uh, we're working, we're working very hard over here uh, to to make the event experience better for every organizers and attendees. So again, we we from hopping, we thank you all for for from joining. Thanks, Christian. Nice name. All right, I'll give it a few more minutes, and then I'll, I'll hop up here. But uh, yeah, other than that, thank you all. And also, if you if you guys have tips on, I'm I'm curious how other people manage their time. I mean, this is just one way I do it. Um, that's helped me, but I know there's a million tactics and techniques. So uh, yeah, I, I have, if you want to tweet at me uh, at StackJacker on Twitter uh, and tell me some of the tips you do, I'm always always down. I'm a, I'm a time geek. I love learning about new new things on how to manage your time, and I would love to check it out. Focus Keeper app, making a note right now. Cool. All right, all. Well, uh, yeah, managing emails could be a whole other talk. Uh, de definitely will consider that for the future. Uh, thanks, Gus. Um, well, cool. Well, again, yeah, thank you all so much for taking the time today uh, for listening to me talk about time. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you next time, hopefully. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the event and using Hopin. Thanks, guys.